Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. It is trail running shoe review time at the channel and we are back today with our in-depth review on the all new remodeled trail running shoe from Brooks, the Cascadia 16. It's great to be back with another review, but I've got to say it, it's even better to be back running. So finally, after all those issues I've been having on the right side on the lower leg, I managed to get out for a couple of three to four mile runs. Nothing crazy, super, super steady and taking it really easy. And the lower leg was feeling okay. Uh, I just want to say a massive thanks to you guys at home for all the support that you've given me and the channel since I've been injured. Unfortunately, I've learned over the years that niggles and injury is a big part of running. And you know, we have to manage our bodies through these times, do the rehab, stay positive, stay strong, and we will make it back eventually. We took the cameras along on that first run and made a short video just so we can sort of document the comeback trail. So definitely worth checking out if you haven't watched it already. But I have to say it, we might only be running three or four miles and the pace is very slow, but it is great to be back. Anyway, we're here to give you the lowdown on the exciting Brooks Cascadia 16. So let's dive into the review and give you a few facts and figures on this all new, very bright, trail running shoe so it retails in the UK for 120 pounds weight wise it comes in at 320 grams in a men's UK 9.5 and 269 grams in a women's shoe it runs off an 8 mil offset on the heel and it is available in three different colorways for men and two different colorways for women when it comes down to the sizing on the shoe I would say it sizes up true to size with good width in the toe box when it comes down to the construction there has been a lot of change when you can compare the Cascadia 16 against the previous version, the 15. And when I say a lot of change, Brooks have literally thrown away the 15 and started all over again. So let's talk midsoles first, and the shoe now comes with Brooks's new DNA Loft V2 compound, and you get an extra two mil depth when it comes to cushioning underfoot. This has been designed to give you a much plusher and softer ride when you're hitting the trails. And Brooks claimed that in the latest version, it makes the shoe 5% softer and a massive 20% lighter when compared to the previous version. And that is definitely a big step in the right direction. Worked into that midsole construction is a new updated ballistic rock shield, and it now comes with vertical grooves. So still offering great underfoot protection from the trails, but not compromising the flexibility of that midsole. So you've also got some really handy drainage ports worked into the shoe as well. So allowing water to escape quickly. So perfect for British trail running conditions. Very similar when it comes to the upper and the new Cascadia 16 now comes with this new engineered mono loop 3D print upper for increased breathability and faster drying. You get good levels of padding around that ankle collar and in the tongue of the shoe. And I'm glad to say that the tongue is gusseted into that upper just to give you that nice precise midfoot hold. There's some structural overlays around the toe box and the lace eyelets just for a bit of extra durability. You've got a nice level of protection on the toe with a toe bumper and you get a really handy little elastic strap to stow your laces under. If you're a big fan of hitting the trails wearing gaiters then Brooks have added a nice handy gaiter attachment. Lastly the all-important outsole and you can see that Brooks has properly beefed up the lug depth and the pattern on the Cascadia 16 so you now get this deeper lug more aggressive layout on that lug pattern and interestingly when you look at it you've also got this wider profile to the midsole and I actually think when you look at it it looks very similar to a Hoka Mafati when it comes to that width and the lug pattern glad to say that them lugs are still coated in Brooks's sticky trail track rubber to offer good levels of grip in wet and dry conditions on a big mix of different terrains there it is folks the massively updated 
Brooks Cascadia 16. Now, over the years, I've run quite a lot of miles in different versions of this shoe, and it's always performed okay. And in fact, I think my first pair of trail running shoes were a Brooks Cascadia 5 or 6, I think. Um, it's always been pretty solid, but it's never really excited me when it comes to a trail running shoe. That is until now. I think Brooks have done a fantastic job on the design of this new model and the colorway. I'm loving this yellow, red and black colorway. I've run 30 miles plus in the shoe and it even came out to Chamonix with us. So let's see if it performed as well as it looks or is it a bit of style over substance? And let's start with the good stuff first. So it looks like Brooks have joined the deep cushion trail running shoe party with the new Cascadia 16. And I've got to say it, I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking it, it does look very hoka-like in its construction. So you're sunk into that deep midsole. We've got that much wider profile on the shoe now compared to previous versions. So very hoka-like. What I would say about the cushioning is it's pretty plush underfoot, but it's not, say, Hoka Spigo soft. So it still gives you that really nice balance between comfort and connection when you're hitting the trails. I personally think this is a big step in the right direction for the Cascadia model. In the past, I've always found the shoe a little bit under cushioned, if anything, and a little bit firm for those longer sort of training runs or longer races. So a great addition to the Cascadia model, having a bit of plushness and comfort under your foot. Not only has the midsole been beefed up when it comes to the cushioning, but that outsole has been hitting the gym as well. So you now get this much deeper and more aggressive lug layout on the bottom of the shoe. Definitely grippy enough to be run all year round, even in the wettest and muddiest of British conditions. And I've always found that the trail track rubber that Brooks use um, offers a pretty consistent level of grip on most surfaces. So the outsole has performed really well. If you follow the channel for some time now, you'll know I'm a massive fan of having a rock plate worked into the forefoot of my trail running shoes. I spend a lot of time sort of running on technical rocky Cornish coastal trails. So having a bit of added protection under your forefoot can really help sometimes. This new ballistic shield in the Cascadia 16 has performed really well. Good levels of protection. Having those vertical flex grooves worked into that ballistic shield uh, haven't compromised that midsole at all. So it's still allowed to adapt to uneven conditions underfoot. So big fan of the ballistic rock shield, good levels of protection and flexibility. Just the right level of padding around that heel and in the tongue of the shoe. And this sometimes can be an area for me that Brooks do overdo it, you know, they just put too much padding and too much stuff in the shoe. So glad to say that's not the case with this upper. And overall, I found it very, very comfortable and nice and breathable. So all in all, I've really enjoyed the updates and it's great to see Brooks putting a lot of time, money and development into the Cascadia model to bring it up to speed a bit so it can compete with all the other trail running shoes out there. But there was just one issue and it is quite a big issue when it comes to my trail running shoes, but it is a personal issue. And it is that the shoe is quite wide and not just wide in the toe box, it's quite wide at the midfoot as well. Now, if you're quite wide and you've always struggled feeling quite constricted in your trail running shoes, or you've got a lot of depth to your midfoot, then I dare say you'll really enjoy the fit of the Cascadia 16. Unfortunately for me, I'm kind of the opposite. So I'm quite narrow in foot width and I'm quite shallow at the midfoot. So I did find it quite hard to lock this upper in around my foot shape. Um, this is a feature I always look for in my trail running shoes. I want to feel connected. I want to feel locked into that midfoot. So when I'm moving at speed in technical areas, I feel very connected and stable. The last thing I want is lateral and medial slippage in the upper. And unfortunately, this is what I kind of got in these. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't terrible. When I was running out on the flatter trails, I had no problems with the fit at all. It was only when I picked up the more technical stuff and obviously taking the shoe out to Chamonix, we got to test it in some pretty technical areas. And that's where I felt I wasn't quite held and I did have a little bit of slippage in the upper, even though it's got a gusseted tongue in that shoe. I think it just comes down to the design and the fit of the shoe. It's just a little bit wide for my foot shape. But we've reached that time in the review when we need to get some points on the Run For Adventure board. Just before we do that, guys, if you're enjoying the content on the channel and you want to support us, don't forget we've got some wicked merch merchandise available at runforadventure.uk so I've left a link in the description below so you can check it out. Anyway, 
Let's get stuck into the scoring and let's start with the price first. With the Cascadia 16 retailing for £120 here in the UK, having the ability to run on lots of different types of terrain all year round and the fact that it's gone through a substantial remodel and it hasn't gone up in price, which is always something that I like. Because of all these reasons, we're going to score the Cascadia a good value, 8 out of 10 when it comes to price. Rapidly moving on to comfort and performance and this is an area where the previous versions of the Cascadia have always struggled a little bit in my eyes so I've always wanted them to be a little bit lighter a little bit softer in that midsole and maybe a bit more exciting and with this new version it seems like Brooks have sort of got my wish list and ticked all the things off because this is a much better shoe now I can't really fault anything on the shoe when it comes to comfort and performance I suppose if I was being super critical it could still be a little bit lighter it doesn't run heavy but it could be a little bit lighter and that midsole could be slightly softer Obviously, there was that personal issue for me with it being quite wide in the toe, quite wide at the midfoot, it not quite holding my foot shape well, but all in all, the shoe has performed well, and you really can see that Brooks have focused a lot of time and attention in the development of the new model. So we're gonna score the very bright Cascadia 16, a massively improved eight out of 10 when it comes to comfort and performance. Always last to score here at the channel is the super important topic of durability, and so far, so good. No early signs of wear on that upper or on the outsole rubber at all. And this is good to see because in the past there has been some durability issues with this model of shoe. So happy to report that it's looking solid so far. So racking up another 8 out of 10 when it comes to durability. So we've got 8s all round, tallying up those scores, a run for adventure for the all new remodeled Cascadia 16 from Brooks. It's going to score the best version of this shoe so far, 24 out of 30. As far as the looks of the shoe, and if you've followed the channel for some time, then you probably know the outcome of this because I am a big fan of a bright, bold, colourful running shoe. And this new Cascadia definitely fits the bill. Now I know colourway design is super subjective and this bright colourway isn't going to be to everybody's liking, but there is some more subtle colourways available. But we're going to give it a big thumbs up at Run For Adventure when it comes down to looks. Comparisons to the Cascadia 16, I mentioned it earlier, the Hoka Mafati has a very similar profile to that midsole and a similar lug depth. And also Saucony's Exodus 11, both of them are deeply cushioned trail running shoes that offer really good levels of grip and traction from the outsole all year round. So there you have it, some details about the spec and the construction, what we've liked about running in the Cascadia, what we thought about the looks and the design and a few comparisons. But I think it's about time that we wrap this review up with a quick conclusion. Like I've already mentioned, it's great to see Brooks having a big push when it comes to the development of their trail running shoes. I've always found their trail running shoes in the past are okay, but just okay they don't excite me so really happy to see them putting a lot of time and effort into the Cascadia franchise so if you're looking for a trail running shoe that can handle most types of terrain all year round you like a nice deep lug on the outsole and a soft cushioned midsole that's not too soft then I would recommend taking a look at the Cascadia 16 I think if you're that type of runner that likes a lot of volume in their trail running shoes or you've got good width to your foot shape and you've always struggled with shoes feeling a bit constricting then I'm pretty sure you'd like the feel and fit of the new Cascadia 16. We are all done when it comes to the new Cascadia from Brooks running and I don't know whether you can hear that but I think winter has arrived. The rain and the wind on that window over there it sounds like it's going to blow in at any second. Hopefully it won't but yeah that is a wrap on another review at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it guys, really hope you found it helpful. I've left links below for the new Cascadia. If you wanna find out any more information about the shoe, please feel free to do so. And the shoe is available at PB Running down here in Cornwall. It would also be great to get your feedback, guys. Have you got a pair of the new Cascadia 16s? Especially if you've run in previous versions. What do you think about the new and improved updated version? Let us know in the comments below. We've still got the giveaway running till the end of the month where you can walk away with some awesome Run For Adventure swag. So I've left the details in the description below of how to enter. So get involved, guys. Don't miss out. Uh, I've just had my new Apex Pro from Chorus turn up. So I'm off to open this up and play around with a nice new bit of running tech but as always guys thanks for watching it's really appreciated we will see you back here very soon and don't forget stay safe and keep on running